In the previous mini-lecture, we developed the concept of fluid head, which is a measure of the energy of a flow at a given state. We observed that for an idealized flow with no losses or work or heat addition, the total fluid head does not change, even though the velocity, pressure, or elevation may change. Two effects that can change the total head of a fluid are work, such as pumping, or friction. In this video, we will explore the change in fluid head associated with pumping. We start with defining our system as a steady pipe flow with a change in elevation, velocity, and pressure. A pump operates on the fluid. Writing the mass balance, we see that for a steady flow, we have a constant mass flow rate at both stations. That is, mass flow at station 1 is equal to the mass flow at station 2. We can write the energy balance for a steady flow with no heat transfer, but the pump does work, which shows up as a power in this rate form of the energy balance. Solving for the work and dividing by the mass flow rate, we have the specific enthalpy at station 1, plus the velocity at station 1 squared over 2, plus the acceleration due to gravity times the elevation at station 1, minus the same terms at station 2. We substitute the definition for specific enthalpy. H is equal to U plus P over rho. For an incompressible flow under these conditions, the internal energy remains constant and cancels out. Finally, we have that the power divided by the mass flow rate is equal to the pressure at station 1 divided by the density, plus the velocity at station 1 squared over 2, plus the acceleration due to gravity times the elevation at station 1, minus all of the same terms at station 2. Dividing by the acceleration due to gravity and rearranging, we have the pressure at station 1 divided by the density times the acceleration due to gravity, plus the velocity at station 1 squared over 2 times the acceleration due to gravity, plus the elevation at station 1 is equal to the same terms at station 2, plus the pump power divided by the mass flow rate times the acceleration due to gravity. Dimensional analysis on this last term shows that it has units of length and we call it the pump head. We see that the result looks very similar to the Bernoulli equation with an additional term that catches the change in energy due to the pumping action. On the left hand side we have the total head at station 1. On the right hand side we have the total head at station 2 plus the pump head. This result tells us the pump head required to start at station 1 conditions and end at station 2. Often, pumps will be specified by their head rather than their power input to the flow. For example, a pump specification may be 50 feet of head, or 10 meters of head. In the next video, we will explore the changes in fluid head associated with friction. That concludes this mini-lecture on pumping head. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great day.